Hello and welcome to the first video in the series, in which we will learn how to work with the three-dimensional modeling software Autodesk 3D Studio Max and create your own three-dimensional objects. As a start we will get acquainted with the interface of the program, the main tools and functionalities and what we can do with 3ds Max. Of course, we must first have the software installed. Here is the place to add that I am working with version 2018. Of course, the things we are talking about, as we are currently considering the main features of 3ds Max, are available in other versions. Let's start. After choosing a classic or design template for 3D Studio Max, the first thing you will see is this welcome screen. It is slightly different from previous versions. The 2018 version has a much more updated interface. But the previous functionalities and capabilities of the program are preserved. This welcome screen provides very basic information about the initial use of the program. We will go into details. If you decide that there is useful information here you can take a look. And from the last tab there are various links that you can also browse and find useful. After viewing them, you can close it, but if this checkbox is checked, it will be displayed each time you start the program. I will uncheck and close the welcome screen. If I want I can always return it from the help menu welcome screen. We will start with an initial introduction and explanation, which is where and how the interface is organized. At first startup and at first glance at the program, things may seem a bit confusing and too complicated, as there are too many choices and menus. Also enough buttons to contribute to this confusion. But things are pretty well organized and combined, and the fact that we have more access and control over all the commands in Max is essentially an advantage. How are things organized in the program? First, all commands are organized in the standard menus from File, Edit, Tools and so on to the Help menu. In each menu all the commands are semantically collected and organized to be grouped in this group, which is the name of the menu. Unlike previous versions, the Application button has now been removed and the File tab has been added. After the organization in the menus, the other main thing we see are these buttons, which are organized in a separate toolbar. This bar is called the main toolbar. Here again in this main toolbar things are arranged and grouped. For example, the options that are associated with selecting objects are in one group. In another group are those that involve the transformation of objects, such as moving rotation and scaling. Here are the snap buttons. We will specifically look at all the buttons in this menu, as they are quite commonly used and are essential to the program. We will get to know all the things in detail in the next lessons. We are currently doing a quick overview or an introduction to the program interface without going into details. This main toolbar, in which all, or at least the ones we use most often, commands are displayed, is followed by an additional toolbar that is dynamic, called the graphite modeling tool. It can be turned on and off through this button. This ribbon may already be familiar to you as a view from other Autodesk products. It aims to bring together tools for faster access, mainly related to modeling. It can be further opened downwards. Through it we have access to various functionalities when working with certain objects. Right now, I'm going to put it together and even turn it off to see more of the workspace. But whenever we need it, we can activate it again.
The next thing we have is this panel on the right, which is called the command panel. It generally contains buttons that we use to launch new objects, to create them and access their parameters. We will pay attention to this panel again, because a lot of our time while working is spent here. The next thing I'm going to look at are these navigation controls. This group here helps us orient ourselves in the viewport. Viewport is this working window that you currently see embedded in light brown. Then we have a few controls that are related to animation. As well as this time bar, which shows the position of the frame, and time slider with which you can move to the time bar, but these are controls that are related to animation. After them, are these three fields that show us the coordinates of our objects in the coordinate system. On the left is the mini listener of 3D Max. The next panel at the top left is the so-called scene explorer, which offers us the opportunity to see slightly differently organized objects in the scenes. With it we can search, and filter objects according to a given criterion. It is quite useful when the objects in the scene become many. And the last thing that takes up most of the work window is this viewport, the so-called work window. This is where we actually have a view of the sites we work with. From now on, for many of the terms used in English, I will also use English. For example, I will use the word viewport for a working window. You will hear it much more often with the English name than with the Bulgarian ones. Well friends, in this tutorial we learned about the basic look of 3ds Max software. In the following videos we will get acquainted with the main methods of modeling, the most commonly used tools of the program. We will understand through, how many different ways we can see our object. And this is one of the most important things we need to know as a basis for 3D modeling, and working with the program. And don't forget, on our site you can find other training materials to help you gain new knowledge.